welcome to Jersey. And if you're a regular or irregular regular, as Jenny put it last week, or this is your first time, you are warmly welcome to the island of Jersey and for our service today. And I hope you enjoyed our introductory song sung by the Hillsong Worship Group, uh, Holy Spirit, Rain Down. Why? Because today is Pentecost Sunday, and it's a day that we as Christians think of it as our um, birthday of the church. So happy birthday to the, the Church of Christ, and wherever you are, and may you celebrate it in a way that's uh, suitable uh, as followers of Jesus, our Lord and our Saviour. Well, as you may now come to expect from our online services, we have an action-packed morning for you with a couple of surprises, I hope. Uh, we have Willard from St. Heliod from, with opening prayers. We have a, a, a testimony from a circuit steward, Sally, from St. Oban, and uh, probably read by Jenny. And uh, a reading from Joe from St. Martin's and a dramatization from Bethesda Chapel my interview with uh, my wife Deacon Sally about Pentecost and there have been intercessions from the Reverend Devi. The Lord's Prayer will come from all around the world. So let's begin by lighting a candle and a prayer. Jesus breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit on this day of Pentecost, the birthday of the church, we shout with gladness, the Lord is here, his spirit is with us. Amen. Holy Spirit, prepare our hearts to know your peace afresh and to celebrate the good news of God's kingdom. Now we're going to sing a hymn. It's written by Bianca de Siena in the 15th century, translated in the 19th century by Richard Littledale. But it's sung to a tune that we all love, written by Vaughan Williams. It's the BBC Songs of Praise from Dunblane Cathedral in June 2013. Come down, O oh love divine.
Happy Pentecost, everyone. Let us pray together. Gracious God, in all places and at all times you are loving, generous, kind, and compassionate. From the beginning of time, your spirit has offered on the surface of the deep, and in that spirit you have formed us, cherished and valued us. Let this be our song of praise. We love because you first loved us. Generous God, give us a heart of your gratitude for all those things that speak of your love, for friends and family, for the gift of your creation, and for all the places we have witnessed something of heaven. Living and loving God, have mercy on us, pardon and deliver us from all our sins, strengthen and renew us for your service, that we might live and work to your praise and glory and the coming of your kingdom on earth. Amen. Christ tells us that we are saved, not condemned by God. God is love. We are forgiven and forgiven to the full. Amen. The Holy Spirit comes. On the day of Pentecost, all the believers were meeting together in one place. Suddenly, there was a sound from heaven, like the roaring of a mighty windstorm, and it filled the house where they were sitting. Then, what looked like flames or tongues of fire appeared and settled on each of them, and everyone present was filled with the Holy Spirit and began speaking in other languages, as the Holy Spirit had given them this ability. At that time, there were devout Jews from every nation living in Jerusalem. When they heard the loud noise, Everyone came running, and they were bewildered to hear their own languages being spoken by the believers. They were completely amazed. How can this be, they exclaimed. These people are all from Galilee, and yet we hear them speaking in our own native languages. Here we are, Parthians, Medes, Elamites, people from Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus, and the province of Asia. Phrygia, Pamphylia, Egypt, and the areas of Libya around the Cyrene. Visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs. And we hear all these people speaking in our own languages about the wonderful things God has done. They stood there amazed and perplexed. What can this mean? they asked each other. But others in the crowd ridiculed them, saying, They're just drunk, that's all. Then Peter stepped forward with the eleven other disciples and shouted to the crowd, Listen carefully, all of you, fellow Jews in the residence of Jerusalem. Make no mistake about this. These people are not drunk, as some of you are assuming. Nine o'clock in the morning is much too early for that. No, what you see was predicted long ago by the prophet Joel. In the last days, God said, I will pour out my spirit upon all your sons and daughters will prophesy, your young men will see visions, and your old men will dream dreams. In those days I will pour out my spirit, even on my servants, men and women alike, and they will all prophesy. And I will cause wonders in the heavens above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and clouds of smoke. The sun will become dark and the moon will turn blood red before the great and glorious day of the Lord arrives. But everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Thanks be to God. When the Feast of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Without warning, there sounded like a strong gale force that filled the whole building. Then like a wildfire, the Holy Spirit spread and they started speaking a number of different languages. Hola! Bon Guten Tag! Bonjour! Ni hao! The Jews came in and they said, They're speaking our languages, describing God's mighty words. Their heads were spinning. They couldn't make head to tail of any of it. They talked back and forth confused. What's going on here? Others joked, they're drunk on cheap wine. That's when Peter stood up and backed by the eleven, spoke out with bold urgency. 
fellow Jews, all who are visiting Jerusalem, listen carefully. These people aren't drunk. This is what the prophet Joel announced would happen. In the last days, God says, I will pour my, out my spirit on every kind of people. Your sons will prophe prophesy, also your daughters. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. When the time comes, I'll pour out my spirit on those who serve me, men and women both. And they'll prophesy, I'll set wonders in the sky above, and signs of earth below, blood, fire, billowing smoke, the sun turning black and the moon blood red. Before the day of the Lord arrives, the day tremendous and marvellous, and whoever calls for help, to me God will be saved. Well, Sally. Today is a very special day for the Christian church. We call it Pentecost. What does that mean? Well, Pentecost is a Greek word meaning 50th. And in the Christian calendar, it's celebrated 50 days after Easter Sunday. The Bible tells us that after Jesus uh, rose from the dead, he appeared to the disciples for 40 days. Uh, and he gave many convincing uh, proofs that he was alive and then he was taken up to heaven. But before he left, uh, he instructed his disciples not to leave Jerusalem and to wait for the gift that God had promised and that Jesus himself had spoken about. Um, Jesus promised that the Holy Spirit, who God would send in his name, would teach his disciples all things and remind them of everything he had said to them. And so on this day of Pentecost, that was the day when that Holy Spirit came. And that's what we read about in the, in the Bible reading just now. Uh, on the day of Pentecost, uh, Jesus' disciples experienced being dramatically filled with the Holy Spirit. And that empowered them to do amazing things. Yeah. But it wasn't just a, a Christian uh, as, um, celebration, was it? It was, uh, we in a sense, inherited it from the Jewish tradition. So what's it, is it in the, uh, the calendar as well? So what does that mean for the, the uh, Jewish calendar then? Uh, well, absolutely. Um, we must remember that Jesus was Jewish and that um, uh, the Festival of Pentecost was uh, celebrated a long time before it featured in the Christian calendar. And uh, within the Jewish, within Judaism, uh, Pentecost is celebrated 50 days after the Passover. And uh, they have two um, harvest festivals in the Jewish calendar. And this is the, uh, Pentecost is the spring harvest festival known as Shavuot. And, uh, and that's why in um, our Bible reading today, there were so many people uh, in Jerusalem at the time when the Spirit came because they were there to celebrate uh, this spring harvest festival. Uh, and in fact, there would have been people there from all over the known world at that time. And yet each of them heard the disciples speaking in their own language. Oh. So what do you think that tells us? Uh, I think it's a, a clear sign of the Holy Spirit's unifying power, uh, which brings together people of all backgrounds, cultures and ethnicities. Well, but, uh, yeah, being inclusive is one thing, but uh, there's always been a problem in, of inclusive of women. So what that... How did, you know, how does that fit in to all this? Well, women in those days had very little, if no, status. They were regarded either as uh, possessions of their father or their husband. And yet we are told that the Holy Spirit was also poured out upon them. And I think that's absolutely brilliant. And in fact, we're told later in the story um, that 3,000 people were added to the disciples' number um, that day and hence the reason why we sometimes refer to Pentecost as the birthday of the church. Wow okay but um, are there any parallels between the, the first day of Pentecost and today's world when in, in the midst of its crisis? As we look at the story I mean I can't help but see some parallels between what uh, happen, happened then and what's happening now we often speak of the Holy Spirit falling afresh on us or we sing spirit of the living God fall afresh on me um, 
Now, I don't believe for one minute that God caused this pandemic to happen, but I do believe that God, through the power of the Holy Spirit, uh, can bring good out of the most appalling tragedies. And personally, I see a great moving of the Spirit at this time. So uh, can you tell us some of those parallels that you think there are? Well, as I think of the uh, parallels between the first disciples' um, circumstance and our own, um, initially I thought of us all uh, being called to stay in our own homes, just as the disciples were called to stay in Jerusalem. Um, but then when I actually think about it, the, the disciples were told to stay in one place. And so I'm beginning to wonder if the parallel is more between uh, the Christian community um, being all in one place or mainly all in one place, i.e. the church uh, building, and that we're now being empowered to reach out into the world. I mean, if anyone had told us at Christmas that by Easter we would be producing services that would be uh, people would access directly in their own homes, I think we probably wouldn't have believed it, would we? Well, I, I certainly wouldn't have believed it anyway. Mm -hmm. um, but so what, what other evidence is there for this outpouring of uh, God's Holy Spirit? Well, uh, a survey commissioned by the Christian Charity Tear, Tear Fund indicates that a record number of people are now um, attending church online services since the lockdown began. In fact, uh, I think it was a couple of Sundays ago, wasn't it, when uh, it was on the media, the, the headline was the, the church has broken the internet. There were so hmm. many people accessing Christian services that morning. But generally around um, five to seven percent of people in the UK attend a church service at least once a month. But uh, since the lockdown began, that uh, that number has skyrocketed to 24% of the British population. And the survey also tells us that some 3 million people have turned to prayer in the UK. Some 3 million new people have turned to prayer in the UK since the lockdown began. And uh, an, a well-known online Christian bookseller reported a 55% increase in the sale of Bibles in the month of April. I mean, that's just amazing. Well, isn't that it? is amazing. And I, that's the UK statistics, isn't it? Mm -hmm. And I just wonder what the statistics would be for the rest of the world. Uh, and that would be truly amazing if we had all that information to hand. But anyway, um, I, I heard uh, whispers that uh, uh, something called the National Blessing is is uh, is. Uh, quite a, a big movement at the moment so what's your thoughts about that when i think of uh, in the bible story the disciples all speaking together i think what an amazing sound uh, that must have been and i i think of this uh, national blessing song we have the uk blessing that was pulled together by worship leader tim hughes and uh, there are singers from over 60 churches in the uk taking part in that and then uh, within a week of that being released it had been watched over two million times and i actually uh, the first i knew about it was when a, a couple uh, who were not regular church attenders but they they were so deeply moved by the song that they sent it to me and um when i went on the internet to ha have a look at it again when i was researching um I was amazed because there isn't just the UK blessing, there's the Hawaii blessing, the Pittsburgh blessing, the South African blessing, uh, the Malaysian blessing, the Zimbabwe blessing. And there was one recording which was simply called uh, a blessing uh, around the globe. So, Sally, what, what do you read into all of that? Well, for me, it's a, a clear sign of the unifying power of the Holy Spirit at work fresh in our time. Um, Peter Gregg, who is the pastor of the Emmaus Road Church in the UK, wrote recently on Facebook uh, that he was talking to a BBC journalist and uh, this journalist had commented on the song's extraordinary display of unity. I read somewhere uh, just recently about um, uh, our Prime Minister, uh, well, not our Prime Minister, but uh, the Prime Minister of the British uh, uh, Parliament, uh, uh, Boris Johnson. Uh, he was uh, writing uh, something to, uh, to uh, Tim Hughes, um, as you said, uh, about the UK blessing. And he said about the blessing it brought, it was uh, truly uplifting and has touched millions around the world with its message of hope and its beauty. 
How amazing is that? I know. And in our Bible reading this morning, it says your young men will see visions and your old men (laughs) will dream dreams. What are your thoughts on that? I just want to say, I mean, how many uh, video clips have you been sent or have we um, we come across uh, in this time? Uh, video clips envisioning uh, a new and better world, you know, a world where people care for one another, where we care for our, our planet and the natural world, where there's a, a new and uh, better way of being and relating to one another. Relating to one another. Well, we saw, didn't we, the other day, uh, mm-hmm. the Archbishop of Canterbury, uh, he was speaking out on the news and he said, just because we're in the middle of a crisis, it doesn't mean that we can't have a vision, a vision for a future where justice and righteousness are the keystones of our common life. Yes, absolutely. I mean, justice and righteousness, along with mercy and compassion, are common themes that run right throughout the whole Bible. Um, And I feel sad if there are people out there today who've got the wrong impression. They've got an impression that going to church is all about wearing the right clothes and saying the right words and performing the right uh, rituals, because we know it's not about that, is it? Uh, I mean, worshipping God on Sunday, it is a good thing to do, but only if it's done with the right heart. And uh, what we say in church on a Sunday uh, matches what we do in the rest of the week and uh, matches what we do in the rest of our lives. Absolutely. Um, Listen to what God had to say to the people of Israel through the prophet Amos, some 700 years before Jesus was born when they performed their rituals of worship and uh, made offerings to God without care or concern for the vulnerable in their communities. From Amos, God says this, I hate, I despise your religious festivals. Your assemblies are a stench to me. Even though you bring me burnt offerings and grain offerings, I will not accept them. Though you bring choice fellowship offerings, I will have no regard for them. Away with the noise of your songs. I will not listen to the music of your harps. But let justice roll like a river. Righteousness like a never failing stream. I love that passage. I think there may may be some people out there uh, this morning who are a bit surprised about that passage. But... Um, Jesus too prioritised justice and righteousness along with mercy and compassion. Up until recently, I think it would be, would it be fair to say that uh, on the whole, we lived in a fairly individualistic society? Mm -hmm. You think that would be fair? And I think within Christianity, we tend to focus uh, very much on the personal relationship with Jesus. But actually, the gospel is so much bigger than that I mean Jesus came and he reached out to the vulnerable and the marginalized in the society of his day he tells us himself that he came to bring good news to the poor and set the oppressed um, free that was his mission on earth and we are invited by the power of the Holy Spirit to play our part in that mission we are invited to play a part in bringing about God's kingdom on earth. And that is a kingdom where justice and righteousness reign. So, Sally, in a few words, (laughs) can you tell us what you think about the future? I know that uh, we, as people in the Western world, we've come to take safety and comfort for granted. Well, we've almost come to expect it as our right, haven't we? And I know that in recent times, you know, tragedy has come to our door and we have experienced the most appalling tragedies. And I wouldn't want to make light of that um, this morning. However, I can't also help but feel excited that uh, through the power of the Holy Spirit, God's kingdom is coming ever closer and that uh, a new era is dawning yes so let's be encouraged today this birthday of the church and uh, with, with every 
yeah, even in the midst of crisis, we still celebrate birthdays, don't we? And I, I want us to be uh, uh, enthusiastic about uh, and you know uh, and to take this forward to be able to make a difference in our communities, in our society, and in our world today. And I want to invite you to pray with me in our prayer. Let us pray. Oh, Father God, I thank you for the promises that Jesus gave to his disciples and to us, that he would pour out his Holy Spirit. He would send us the Comforter, I certainly need a comforter in these times. But also the, the one who would come alongside us and encourage us to remind us of the scriptures, to remind us of all the things that you have promised us and all the things that will come to pass. We thank you, Father, that your, the gift of the Holy Spirit is not just a one-off gift, but it's a continuation of of the, of the outpouring of your love and your grace and your mercy and your justice and righteousness that can be done through our lives and make an impact in our society today. So we pray, Father, that you pour out of the Holy Spirit afresh on, on me, on Sally, on all of us who are watching this morning, on all of us around the world, that we can make a big impact, not just for our own sake, but for the sake of the kingdom, that your word may go forth and people respond to your love, to your mercy, and to know you in all your fullness. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen.
everyone. This week has been the 10th week of working from home and that's been the roller coaster of emotions that I've been through and many of us have been. There have been many phrases I've heard on social media over the last 10 weeks such as it's okay not to be okay and we're all in the same storm but not necessarily in the same boat and that's very true. We are all experiencing different things during this time and it hasn't been discriminative. It doesn't matter if you're young or old or living on your own or with other people. Everyone has felt something outside of their normal comfort zones. We've all been through varying stages and degrees of emotions from the great joy of the sun shining to being able to go outside more then to the utter frustration and hypersensitivity, upset and loneliness. But none of this is wrong, just very real to each individual person. But it's made me think about the times Jesus showed it's, it's okay not to be okay and gave a very visible display of his emotions. There's many examples in the Bible, but some I thought about was when we see his frustration and he upturns the tables in the temple, his vulnerability when being tempted by the devil, and the desperation on his face and what he says on the cross are just a few, but we know that God is always there during these occasions. Another phrase I heard is, God didn't call the equipped but equips the called. I feel that as Christians we're able to bring all of our emotions and our worries, our thankfulness and joy to God who is a constant in this unusual time. We have an ability to leave everything we're feeling at the foot of the cross, which reminds me of the song, cast your burdens onto Jesus, he cares for you. Something I read which I've just adapted if we, if we need catching, he will catch us. If we need strengthening, he will strengthen us. He's got us firmly in his grasp. He's passionately, eternally committed to each and every one of us. And he will always be what we need. So take care, everyone. Amen. For our prayers of intercession today, I'm going to leave some space after each little section of prayers so that you have time to reflect or perhaps add in prayers of your own. Let us pray. Loving God, on this special day, we ask for the gift of your spirit for all in need. We think of the fear and anxiety of those early disciples who were waiting and remember all those who feel the same today. We pray for the strength of your spirit to keep them going. We pray for those who are sick in hospital, at home or in care homes and ask for the touch of your spirit to heal and revive. We remember those who are far away, but are close to us in hearts and minds. As the dove of your spirit flies across the distance, fill the space between us and hold us in the unbroken circle of your love. We remember those who are working tirelessly and selflessly to care for others and provide what we need. We think of the doctors, nurses, midwives, community nurses, porters, cleaners and auxiliary carers. May the wind of your spirit encourage and support them in their daily tasks. We pray for those who are grieving or alone. May the comfort of your spirit fill them with peace and blessing 
as they sense your presence. We think of the funeral directors and all those who are involved in related work. May they hear your still small voice of calm, enabling and holding them. We think of those who have difficult decisions and choices to make, especially those whose authority and roles affect others. For those in government and in business, and especially for those who have lost their jobs. Give them the wisdom of your spirit to guide, lead and counsel in positive and generous ways. We remember those who feel lost, abandoned or unloved, especially the forgotten refugees and those who are held captive in abusive situations. We pray for the breath of your spirit to speak to those who can bring change and new life. And we pray for the inner and outer transformation that your spirit brings to all who need it. We pray for families, children and those who teach and nurture them. We ask for your inspiration and creativity of your spirit to offer hope, security and life lessons which will grow into the fruits of your spirit. Strengthen the bonds of love between them and protect them from harm. We think of the ordinary people who are finding extraordinary talent, resources, courage and motivation that is making a big difference. For the pharmacists, supermarket workers, delivery drivers, shoppers, administrators and all those who work behind the scenes. Blow the wind of your spirit over them and revive them as they work. And we pray for ourselves as we face uncertainty and change. May we see positive opportunities and embrace them with open hearts. May the flame of kindness ignite the fire of love in us and all whom we share our lives with. May we feel the freedom that your spirit brings the peace that passes all understanding and the warmth of your joy, now and always. Amen. And now we're going to hear the words of the Lord's Prayer spoken by our friends and sisters and brothers around the world in the Methodist Connection and the World Wide Connection. As they share with us, we pray. Our Father, Ato Ernav, Galad de Deirnas, Sia Fata La Tua, M. Shabeni, Jenga says Oluini. Woman Ren Yong Ding Shi Ting Re Shi Gay Woman Mutire Gerereo Zitazo Zedu Perdonanos nuestras deudas, como también nosotros perdonamos a nuestros deudores. Nika Fonico Kima Mikina Berre Napurangin Apagalava Gatamenever. Denn dein ist das Reich und die Kraft und die Herrlichkeit. May delivery new Duma. Amen. Amen. 
come to towards the end of our service has been a hot day today as you can see from my uh, sun on my face in the background but anyway uh, we come to the end of our service and I want to say thank you to everyone who's given their contributions to this service today especially little Harry from Bethesda who did us uh, proud with the Lego creation of the Acts reading but thank everyone else who's taken part in the service, the prayers and reading and so forth. But also to thank you for coming on board and sharing this day with us. Pentecost Sunday, the birth of the church. Now, I, I would love to know also what you think of our uh, services. And uh, but you can let us know by contacting us via the uh, Jersey Methodist Circuit website. You can search for it and find it. I'm sure you will. And uh, we've had some very good responses so far. But also, you know, just to remind you of what Reverend Jenny wanted uh, us all to be challenged by a few weeks ago with uh, having testimonies of what God is doing in your life right now. And I'm hoping that today, of all days, we can remember how God came upon us by his Holy Spirit. And I hope you will be blessed by it. So next week we have Trinity Sunday with Reverend Tony uh, and uh, with his wife Kathy Morning. And uh, also after the service, after our blessing, and what is to follow is uh, a virtual coffee and chat, which is every Sunday, 11.30 to 12.30. Thank you again for sharing with us in Jersey. And we will look forward to worshipping with you again, maybe next week. Bless you. May God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Creator, Redeemer, and Sustainer, go with us now. And may God's Spirit be on us, on those we love and on those we're called to love, and all those whom we should be praying for this Pentecost day and always. Amen. <laughs>